Oh yeah, we're back again. Time for another video. Uh, today's video is going to be a continuation on genetics. Now, we talked about uh, different vocab, a different terminology we would hear throughout this unit. And now we're going to look at Punnett squares using our dominant and recessive traits. So again, even if you don't have this lovely handout, you can always use your uh, blank notebook paper, whatever the next page is in your spiral notebook, your book of biology, AKA your Bob. Um, follow along with me as we go through this. So this is our lesson on monohybrid Punnett squares. So first thing is, we're gonna look at the root word. So we have monohybrid, mono meaning one. So with a monohybrid Punnett square, we're looking for a single trait cross. Just one. We're looking at a single trait, one trait. So one trait that Gregor Mendel looked at, um, he wanted to see how traits were passed on from pea plants from one generation to the next. One trait that was particular in these plants was the height. So we noticed that tall plants were most likely to be observed, where short plants only happened occasionally in these crosses. So our first question is, what is the dominant trait? Well, since tall plants were most likely to be, most likely to be observed, tall would be our dominant trait. And we're going to represent that with a big T allele. And what is the recessive trait? The weaker trait is short plants because you only see those on occasion. So we're going to write short. Now it's very important to note when you're dealing with a monohybrid cross, it is very tempting to go, why don't I just make S for short? You're going to confuse yourself. We're only dealing with one trait. So we need to stick with one letter so it stays fluid and it's not confusing. So I'm going to give it a lowercase t. Because remember, this is the weaker allele. So I'm going to represent it as such. Now, we're looking for genotype, right? And let me hear you. Everybody knows what genotype was. Oh, I heard somebody say it. Yes. This is that code. Okay. So genotype is going to be two alleles together will give us our genotype if it is homozygous dominant meaning our dominant letter is t if we're looking at the same size letters we're going to have big t big t okay if we're looking at homozygous recessive and we know our recessive allele is little t homozygous meaning the same we're going to have little t, little t, and then heterozygous dominant, which means different. It's going to be dominant still, big T, little t, okay? Anytime a dominant allele is present, the dominant trait is going to always be seen. So there is no such thing as heterozygous recessive because... Big T is always going to overpower little t. So the only three genotypes you could get are these three. Homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, and then heterozygous dominant. Now, what in the world is a Punnett square, right? Well, Punnett squares are used to analyze genetic crosses. So if I wanted to see the probability of crossing two plants that were heterozygous for tall, then I could do it with a Punnett square. So I'm going to switch up colors really, really quick. So the way a Punnett square works is I'm going to start at my top. So if I know both parents are heterozygous, I'm going to go, and I know heterozygous tells me big T, little t. 
I'm going to write one parent across the top, big T, little t, and then the second parent on the left, big T, little t, okay? It doesn't matter which parent you put where in any situation. It, that one has to be at the top, one is going to be on the left, but it doesn't matter where, okay? So this first big T is going to come down in both boxes. This little t is going to come down in both boxes. This big T is going to come in cross. And then this little T is going to come across. Now, when I learned biology, and the first thing I learned about Punnett squares is I know every box that a big T is going to be in, it's always going to come first. So I'm going to start with my big T first. Big T goes in this box because it comes down. And then big T comes down in this box. Now, we know that little t is always going to come behind. So the easiest thing to do is come down. So this little t goes in this box. And this little t goes in this box. Now let's do our cross. So my cross, big T coming across. Big T coming across. What comes across here? Little t. Fill it in. Little t. So what we have is big T, big T, big T, little t, big T, little t, and little t, little t. If I wanted to know how many of plants would it be short, I'm going to put a little dot to represent the all the crosses that could be tall, all the plants that could be tall. So big T, big T, tall or short? Tall. Big T, little t, tall. And big T, little t again, tall. So my probability, I'd have three out of four or 75% chance of getting a tall plant. Four because I have one, two, three, three, four. This is four tall. Short, my probability would be one out of four or 25% short. So if you see this on a quiz or a test and I ask you for probability, that's what I'm asking for. If I ask you how many would be tall, you would just count one, two, three. Three would be tall. And then one would be short. This is our total number of chances or uh, crosses that we have. That's our probabilities. So if we change things up, right, let's say one parent was homozygous dominant. This is our change. Homozygous dominant. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to come across. Come across. Right? So this is big T coming across. This is little t coming across. And we come down. And we come down. Now I have another big T. I have big T here. Big T here. And little t here. So now, if we were to look at this, how many are tall? We have one, two, three. Now, if you're really paying attention, I made a mistake somewhere, didn't I? Yes, I did. This big T comes down. So we have what's actually big T, not little T, because big T comes down. So if you caught that, kudos to you. So now we're going to have a total of four that are going to be tall. But the way I'm going to write this is from big T, big T, we have two that are tall. And we have big T, little t, two that are tall. So we got a 50% chance of being homozygous dominant and also a 50% chance of being heterozygous.
how many are short we have no little t little t's so it is zero and i'm going to put big t big t for this box because i made a mistake so remember across across down down let's look at the last one together now we have another we have one parent it is what we call homozygous recessive okay so following our same formula i'm going to bring this down bring this down bring these two across and across so if i bring big t down i know big t is always going to go in the front what comes down here little t little t now let's go across little t little t cross little t little t okay so now let's look at how many are tall let's go big t big t did we have any big t big t's no there's zero so there's a zero percent chance of having a uh offspring that is homozygous dominant did we have any big t little t's why yes we did we had two so we got a 50 percent chance did we have any short little t little t's we did we had two so we have a 50 percent chance so we have 50 percent chance being tall 50 percent chance being short and we also have a 50 percent chance of being what we have heterozygous dominant so that has been punnett squares again this is super super easy um, I always like to make the arrows and then eventually you get to a point where you don't have to anymore. If you have any questions, feel free to email me uh, until next time. My future biologists keep studying.